Hello and welcome to Training Tuesday for July 27th, 2021. I'm Lori with Behavior Education at Spirit Keeper Equine Sanctuary. Thank you for joining me. This Training Tuesday, I wanna share a different type of training with you than you are used to seeing from me. It's easy to recognize that an animal is being trained when there is a trainer, equipment, a cue is given, the animal performs a behavior and reinforcement is delivered thus increasing the chances that the animal will continue to repeat the behavior the trainer is asking for, as in this example with Morelia, Bradley, Sabine, and Castiel. I'm cueing them with a target to move to its location. They must change not only their focus, but their direction of travel. Being able to ask the snakes to do this behavior and have them do it is very useful. I can get them to come out of hiding, move in and out of their enclosures, and even get them to come to me when they're loose and someplace I don't want them to be. It's pretty obvious this is training. Now what about this? This is Sarek, a five-week-old Python Regis who sought to come out of his enclosure not once but several times within an hour and proceeded to roam and explore until he became determined to go underneath a neighboring enclosure. What am I training him to do? What's this training for? You might be thinking that I'm teaching him not to go underneath those enclosures because I'm picking him up and moving him back to where he started. Well, I might be if he perceived what I was doing as punishment. Punishment eliminates a behavior or decreases the likelihood that it will occur again in the future. If Sarek viewed my picking him up as an aversive, that would be considered positive punishment. But he keeps repeating the same behavior, so he clearly does not see what I'm doing as punishing. If I put him back into his terrarium every time he moved to go under those enclosures, and I did this consistently, he might come to view it as negative punishment. That means by removing his freedom, his behavior would stop or decrease. I'm not doing that, so what am I training? Have you guessed yet? I'm not teaching Sarek to perform a behavior. I am teaching him to accept something being done to him. I'm using Sarek's very goal-oriented behavior to get underneath those neighboring enclosures as an opportunity to train touch. Once I have touched and picked him up several times, he starts to react to my interference less and less. In fact, he ignores me each time and proceeds faster towards his goal. Every time I put him down, he just moves right back in the same direction he was going. That's when I know I can proceed to training him to approach my hand and essentially cease to perceive my hand as a threat. First, I rest my hand partially under the blanket that we know he's already used to because he's rested on it and climbed over it several times. This doesn't phase him at all. He keeps going towards his goal and my hand being there doesn't really phase him at all. In fact, I never even noticed that he paused or anything. He just kept going. So I pick him up again. I slowly and carefully move him back to his blanket. I do keep my hand on him longer because I'm trying to teach him to accept my touch for longer and longer periods of time. And next, I outright block him with it. So his options are not to proceed at all, to go around my hand, or to go over it. Well, he stops and appraises what's going on. He does pause for a few seconds. Then he moves forward and veers to the side, and he goes over my fingers, but not the palm of my hand. Here I put my thumb on him and he does pause for just a second before proceeding. He was very comfortable and relaxed, so I thought I would move forward a little bit more by not just allowing him to climb over my hand, but to put some pressure on him and it didn't really phase him too much. I eventually picked him up and moved him again. And we actually went through this so many times I lost count. I eventually let him crawl under the enclosures because the vent is blocked. There's nowhere that he can go and get into trouble. I ended up 
feeding him underneath the enclosures because he went underneath there and got into an ambush position. He probably does smell mice under there because mice try to get up through the vents, although I do block those vents with screens so the snakes cannot get through them and the mice can't get up there. All in all, it was a very successful training session and I'm happy with how that went. I feel like he feels very comfortable with me now being not only in his presence, but touching him. It's really obvious that training is taking place when there's a trainer present, a training environment has been set up ahead of time, there's training equipment, a specific cue is given to ask an animal to perform a specific behavior, and then when they perform that behavior, they earn reinforcement and that reinforcement is delivered. It's pretty obvious that's training. I want you to realize that the interaction you just watched between Sarek and me is training as well. Hopefully this video was a great reminder to you that learning is always occurring. Learning's happening all the time during our interactions with our animals, whether we mean for it to happen or not. So it's really important to understand that how our snakes respond to us in the future is dependent on how our past interactions have gone and that our snakes can view us and our interactions together as punishing, reinforcing, or neutral. We really want to try to make interactions with our snakes reinforcing for them. We wanna make sure that our interactions with our snakes, whether during a formal training session or just during an informal session where we're interacting, doing husbandry tasks, or where the snakes are just out for exercise, that we ensure those interactions are positive, that they have a positive valence for the animal and that we avoid them developing negative associations with anything to do with us. You'll know if your snakes perceive your presence as something neutral or something positive or reinforcing as long as their behavior is remaining comfortable and relaxed. Even if there's a few seconds of moderate stress, if they're returning to the green zone very quickly, then you know everything's going all right. But if you start to see stress behaviors that indicate they're not returning to comfortable and relaxed, or they're approaching threshold or going over threshold where they're fearful and distressed, then you wanna stop that interaction. Thank you so much for your interest in snake training and behavior. Until next time, everybody, please remember to always be kind and love your animals.